The more we dive into soundbars, the more I find my opinion of them changing. In the beginning, I was on the lookout for the most complete home theater facsimile. I'm talking dedicated surround sound speakers, separate subwoofer, a built-in receiver, you know, all in one. But lately, I find myself on a journey to see what can be achieved with less. Can you get a true home theater experience, better yet, a full Dolby Atmos experience from a single bar and subwoofer? Well, let's find out as we look into the brand new LG SP9YA soundbar. Yeah. The LG SP9YA is a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos and DTSX compatible soundbar complete with a separate wireless subwoofer. This is a mostly all-in-one solution, though you can expand its capability by adding the SPK8S rear speaker kit. Like last year's SN11 soundbar and many of LG's current products, the new SP9YA has been given a once-over by the wizards at Meridian. The LG has two HDMI ports, one of which supports EARC. There is Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirPlay 2, along with Amazon Alexa and Google Chromecast compatibility built in. In terms of design, the SP9YA is a step in the right direction for LG. The SN11 was nice, but it was the least sophisticated visually when compared to all of the other soundbars we reviewed last year. The SN11 sound good, but it was definitely a plastic fantastic. The new 9 is still plastic, but it looks decidedly more upscale, and I love the move to black over the steel gray. In terms of construction, the 9 feels more substantial and rigid with almost zero flex. Control of the LG is handled by the included remote or the new LG soundbar app. The remote is serviceable, but we ultimately used our existing TV remote, which made it easy to control volume. But the app is where the magic really happens. You can run the LG AI room calibration, dial in the levels of the individual speakers, access the speaker's tone controls, select different sound modes, and more. The app is functional, though it can experience occasional connection issues. Power cycling the bar or the app usually fixes this problem, but it is an annoying quirk nonetheless. The AI room calibration procedure is simple and it doesn't require the use of a separate microphone. Now, I would love to say that after running auto calibration, the results were as dramatic as Dirac or Odyssey, but they're not. Is there a difference? Yes, but at least in our room, the differences were subtle at best. I still recommend running it, just don't expect ambio room correction type results. I tested gaming through the LG using the additional HDMI input. When connected to my PS5, Call of Duty was great and passed through in 4K60 HDR, but sadly no 4K 120, at least not in my experience. If you want to enjoy faster frame rates, you can always plug your console into your TV, then go HDMI ERC out of the TV into the bar. If you're using a regular Blu-ray player or video streamer, such as say an Apple TV 4K, you will have zero problems. The EARC functionality worked flawlessly on the LG. In 2021, having functioning EARC should be automatic, and yet this isn't always the case. Dolby Atmos signals coming from Netflix or Disney Plus registered automatically, and because the LG has a front-facing display, you get visual confirmation of what you're listening to as well. So let's talk about Dolby Atmos. One of the big questions about all-in-one soundbars is whether or not a single bar can successfully recreate surround sound performance without surround speakers. For the last year, our reference in this arena has been the Sennheiser Ambio. While the LG doesn't outright best the Ambio, it's still impressive. When watching films like Six Underground and Jungle Cruise, the spatial cues rendered brilliantly with excellent placement in near three-dimensional space. While I have yet to hear any single bar solution be successful in completely surrounding me, the LG got closer to the standard set by the Ambio than I was prepared for, especially considering that this is not LG's current flagship bar. The LG uses its height and side channels to great effect, and they help to make the bar sound huge up into a point, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Diving deeper. Obviously, a good portion of whether you experience a full-bodied speaker system rests on the strength of the subwoofer. The LG sub is powerful enough to serve as the anchor point despite possessing only 220 watts of total power. While it's not the biggest, most powerful, or most impressive soundbar sub, it has the confidence of a much larger subwoofer. The LG sub is rear-ported, so bass depth and impact is there, but it, it lacks some nuance and articulation when pushed, or when listening to music when finesse can 
sometimes be more valuable than outright grunt. Thankfully, tuning the sub to your taste or to the source material is easy within the app, and when adjusted here and there, you'll get a good blend easy enough. Because the bass is more on the punchy side, the overall response of the LG is more smile-like. So the mid-range is going to sound a little leaner or cooler compared to the richer Samsung Q950A or even the Klipsch Cinema 1200. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. Dialogue intelligibility is very high, as is mid-range presence on the whole, even at lower volumes and without needing to activate any dialogue enhancements. The treble is a little more pronounced and forward, but in my experience, it doesn't overdo it and become aggressive. I like this type of voicing in a home theater speaker, as it allows for a very lively and energetic and exciting experience, which is what I want when getting swept up in an action sequence. It can become a problem, however, if what you're listening to has more sibilance or compression present, in which case these issues will be more noticeable. But all in all, the LG has a lively, punchy overall demeanor and one that manages to sound right in the context of the complete system. One of the strengths of this system is its ability to recreate a sense of space. It doesn't quite pull off the illusion of tricking your mind into thinking you're hearing true surround sound, but it gets mighty close. Dynamically, the LG is something else. Within its limits, this is an impressive system that delivers incredibly satisfying thrills despite its compact setup. If you're sensing a butt coming, here it is. The LG, as capable as I believe it to be, is not going to be for everyone, even if you like soundbars. At volumes over about 85 dB, this bar completely runs out of steam and as a result distorts rather heavily. This is most noticeable in dialogue and starts to sound scratchy and digital when you turn it up. Playing with the system's tone controls or sound settings doesn't exactly help either, because the distortion you're hearing comes from the limits of the speakers themselves and not the presence of excess sibilance or compression. Now keep in mind, 85 dB is pretty loud and in small to medium sized rooms is loud enough to make for a very cinematic experience. Even in our open concept living room, I found 85 dB to do it for me, but man, the second you go a notch or two above, all hell breaks loose and this soundbar falls to pieces. Aside from the LG's volume limitations and occasional connection issues between the app and the bar itself, I don't really have much else to warn you about. All in all, the LG is a good sub thousand dollar package. Is it the best soundbar on the market? Well, no, it's not going to replace our Ambio, but that's not really a fair comparison as the LG is $1,000 and the Ambio is $2,500. As for the higher priced Samsung we recently reviewed, the Samsung is better when it comes to both music and movies. And if you pair it with a newer Samsung TV, the Q950A takes it to a different level with Q-Symphony. But on its own, the Samsung is a little more neutral compared directly to the LG and is going to work well in larger rooms or at higher volumes. I think the Klipsch Cinema 1200 is capable of bigger sound with greater headroom, but as it stands, it lacks a measure of control. Until order is restored to the Klipsch system via an app or firmware update, it doesn't get my recommendation. Now, if you can go without Atmos, I still think the Cinema 600 system is an insane value and will outperform the LG in terms of sheer volume, not to mention bass prowess. And when it comes to the non-Atmos Bose 700, I personally prefer the LG, though the build quality and design of the Bose is hands down superior to that of the LG. The Bose is impressive, but given that it needs a sub to trick the mind into hearing a full range performance and that sub is sold separately, the LG is a better value, all things considered, compared to the Bose. Then of course we have the Vizio Elevate, which has a similar sonic signature to that of the LG. The Elevate is a complete Atmos surround sound speaker system because it has surround speakers, and if you like to tinker, you have endless possibilities with the Elevate. I wish I could say that was enough to sway me in Vizio's direction, but given the choice, I would go with the LG because I found the Vizio to be incredibly fussy. That and the Vizio app is truly terrible. Found. And lastly, we have my other favorite all-in-one Atmos soundbar, the Bang & Olufsen Biosound Stage. The Stage is among the more expensive solutions on the market aside from the Sennheiser Ambio, which is still my reference. The Bang & Olufsen can do most everything the LG can, minus some maybe truly deep bass. It doesn't have a sub after all, but the Bang & Olufsen sounds better overall, especially when it comes to music. Last year, the LG SN11 ignited my passion for soundbars, and while it's no longer our reference soundbar, the new SP9YA builds upon the foundation set by its bigger, more expensive predecessor, and in many ways is even more impressive. I don't consider the 9 to be the best soundbar on the market, 
but it is competitive, especially if you're looking for a more compact solution and don't want to give up too much in the way of performance or features. If I needed a soundbar for, say, an apartment, master suite, game room, or den, the SP9YA would definitely be on my list of contenders. But I would probably go in a different route if your room is large or you just really like to watch movies with the volume set to stun. So that's it. That is now my review of the LG SP9YA Dolby Atmos soundbar. Now it's time to find out what Christy thought of it. I liked it. Yeah? Yeah, I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. um, I think it looks really nice it does it's a really really good compact size mm -hmm. and it completely annihilates the last year's model in terms of just style so yeah. i thought they did a really good job there and i think it does sound a lot better mm -hmm. than the even the supposedly more powerful sn11 whatever yeah they have ridiculous names they but. are so dumb <laughs> um but most most product names are mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely stupid but um it, I, I i will say yeah i totally agree with you way better than the um the bigger yeah predecessor brother whatever yeah. it was uh and especially considering it's a smaller bar it is a smaller bar and seemingly less powerful but it it minus the volume issues inside the inside or between the goalposts of what the nine can do it does sound a little more refined a little bit better i think i think it has the same subwoofer as last year um but i, I feel like maybe they just did the right kind of tweaks to kind of just bring the sound forward without maybe making too many changes because like the app is new but it feels the same um the ai room calibration is still all there but all in all i i just feel like it it feels like a more mature package and it definitely sounds punchier to me. Yeah. You mentioned the smile light curve, mm -hmm. which is, I'm sure, why I was completely pulled out of my room mm -hmm. um, when you were t uh, initially setting it up. And, you know, honestly, like that's for me a true marker for, of a good product. Mm -hmm. If it pulls me out of my seat from, you know, an Somewhere entirely <laughs> other space in the house, mm -hmm. feels like a win. Um, and it just sounds. It definitely sounds uh, a bigger yeah. than the the eleven, and it mm -hmm. definitely sounds like a more powerful, bigger, mm -hmm. exciting, more exciting soundbar. Yeah, and despite it being less channels, I think even yeah, it is. It is. It's uh, it's um it's actually more in line with the Klipsch twelve hundred in terms of channels, whereas like the uh, Samsung and the previous LG and the top of the line LG right now. I think they're all playing with nine or 11 channels. And this is still very much, you know, a five, uh, five dot one dot, uh, two, uh, which is not unlike the Eclipse 1200, which is $500 more expensive. Or no, I think it's more like $600 more expensive because yeah, of the price the, increase. The rates went up. Yeah. yeah. The prices went up. So in terms of value, it's not touching the Vizio Elevate because I think the Vizio Elevate is now 899 and that comes with surrounds and it's technically a more, um, a more surround sound package, but I, I think that the LG is, is better than the Elevate. Well, it's way less complicated. Yeah. And I think for more people, the, the, the more average consumer of a sound bar, mm -hmm. they would likely be happier with the LG just because it's not as fussy. Yeah. It's a little bit easier to set up. Uh, I think just, Overall, it's more of a plug and play type of a system, mm -hmm. whereas the um, the Vizio Elevate, which is very very good, Incredibly it takes good. a lot of fine tuning to mm -hmm. get just right, and you really need a little bit more patience to get there. Mm -hmm. I think for what you might call a true audiophile, the that's really who the Elevate I think is for. If somebody that's really into this. Mm -hmm is looking for either they're like, ah, gosh, you know, I just need to downsize. Mm -hmm. I'm get, you know, maybe you're in a different place in your life yeah. and you're, you're moving to a smaller home or, um, you know, financially you just have to like get rid of some things or, you know, you, maybe you're looking at a secondary yeah, system, yeah. but you really like just the whole mindset of tweaking until you cannot tweak anymore. I think the Elevate would be the right bar for you. But for everybody else, I think this LG is a really good, solid system. Mm -hmm. As far as whether or not I think it's better than the Eclipse Cinema 600 that you referenced, 
uh, that's a pretty, pretty close race. Yeah. I think I might give the nudge to the, this LG. Okay. Over the 600. Um, but it is hard to deny the extreme value. Bar and sub head to head. I think the LG spatially is better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But it is what? $400 Four, maybe $500 more, more expensive. expensive yeah. So whether or not you, need that in your life that's got you know debatable that's got to be your own decision but those are some options out there i know that you spent more time with the lg soundbar than i was able to Mm -hmm. i did not hear this distortion you speak of because like i'm like i don't i'm not lying guys like i'm not gonna lie guys i don't know what the hell andrew's talking about (laughs) in that portion of the review but I think that that's important. That's important because what what that is telling people is is just how loud 85 dB really is. And the truth of the matter is, is that when we watch television or movies for just our general enjoyment, we are rarely watching things that loud. But I have to point out that a lot of people like to take their theater experience up into that 90 and 100 dB range because when you go to a commercial cinema, you're talking about peaks that are in 105, 110, 115 range. And in a home theater, there are people, there are some of you watching this, that are going to say, you know, 85 dB is not theatrical. You're right, it's not, but it's still nevertheless extremely loud. And I'm telling you, up into 85, 86 dB, the LG sounds every bit as good as sound bars that are currently retailing for 14, 15, 1600 bucks. Full stop. Whatever reason, once you get about 86, 87 or higher, which in our room on the volume dial of the LG is like a volume number of 28 to 30, you get above that and you start to hear some distortion in that center channel. That's where it's the heaviest. Music doesn't show this off as much, but dialogue, that center channel, it really does start to show. Now, if 75 dB is melting your face off in your room, you are never gonna run into this problem, in which case the LG is going to be fantastic. Jump it to the front of the line for sub thousand dollar offerings. Mm -hmm. But I know that someone out there is going to watch this review, potentially buy this product, take it home, turn it up to 11, and then blow us up in the comments and say, Andrew doesn't know what he's talking about. This thing is a distortion monster. That's why I have to say it. And I literally took out an SPL meter to find out when in our room that occurred. And the distortion kicked in at 85, 86 dB. Could you still enjoy it? Like, let's say, for instance, you're listening really loud and then the movie kind of spikes and there's just that brief moment where it creeps up to 90 dB, but then comes back down to an average of, say, 78, 79 dB. Is it still enjoyable? Does it completely wreck your enjoyment? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But if you, if you hear that, zzz, that little bit of zzz in the, you know, in the, in the vocal or in that center speaker, that's all. That's all I'm saying. I think that's very helpful. I think that will make things a lot more clear to people okay. watching the review. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, half of those people, they're not here with us anymore. Well, you got to <laughs> stay for the they, end. They, they clicked as soon as they heard you say anything about or Sound whatever. <laughs> you said something like, when you turn it way up, this yeah. thing falls to pieces. I yeah. guarantee you, bye. They all was like. Oh, no, they're all, they're all down in the comments going, trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've, they've already thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've made all sorts of decisions in their life. Um, but, you know, if you're still here, then maybe you've gotten a better better understanding yeah. of things. And, and one more thing before we sign off. Mm-hmm. Speaking of dialogue, clarity, this, the LG, this LG soundbar was really, really good. Yes. So if you're, you're out there and you have, you know, any, any deficiencies, in um, your hearing, mm-hmm. this is going to help you. I think this is going to be an, another another option that would be good for you. Yes, and to point out one more thing, because I know that you're very critical of this type of stuff. This is the first soundbar that we've had probably in f- six months, six maybe seven months, where I have not. I mean, I've tested it, but when we were watching for enjoyment, we had zero dialogue enhancement turned on. Now there is a dialogue enhancement option to turn it on. 
Um, and I tested it. It does obviously enhance the dialogue, but we actually never had it turned on. And so for you to say that with it at zero is high marks for the LG. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Anything else? Nope. All right. Well, that is now our review. If you stayed for the whole thing and haven't made decisions and judgments about your own life, <laughs> that is now our review of the LG uh, SP9YA. Seriously, give these things better names. I Even with the teleprompter, I'm still screwing up. Anyway, uh, let, what do you guys think of it? Let us know down in the comments below. And I have a question of the day for you. And This is a fun one. This is a fun one. Yeah, it is. I want you to be 100% honest. How many of you really hook up the surround sound speakers in either a soundbar system or just a dedicated home theater? How many of you are rocking like 3.1? I, I want to know. I, I can really... tell you how many. <laughs> <laughs> Out of five, probably one. Because there's so many people that are constantly in the comments. How do you hang, you know, where do you hang them? Did you hang them? Where do you put them? Where do you put them? Yeah. You know, just leave them in the box. Who cares? <laughs> Yeah, so that's our question of the day. Let us know. Be honest, how many of you really use surround channels in your home theater setup? If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, and there are a lot of them, know that that is a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we thank you all for doing that. Yeah, we're, we need to buy a new house, so yeah. click, clickety-click. <laughs> clickety-click. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.